Welcome to Kitchen of the Celtic Cater. I'm Chef Eric McBride here. Uh, we're back here again here to do another edition of our historical Celtic cooking demonstrations at the Celtic Cater and Chef Eric McBride on Facebook. Be sure again, go and check out our website, thecelticcater.com. Um, but today we're going to be doing something a little different. Remember last week we did more of a meat kind of dish. Today we're going to do more of a vegetables for Mother's Day here today. And happy Mother's Day for everybody. Now one thing of mothers, my mother really didn't have that much problem with me, but so many mothers do, is how do we get the kids to eat more veggies? Or that, Matt, how do you get anybody to eat more vegetables if they're not really into vegetables that much? Well, this is one of the things that came out, and it's inside my Celtic Style Vegetarian Cookbook, because it's not just written for vegetarians, it's written for everybody to really enjoy their vegetables. So one of the blends that we're gonna be doing today, the thing is, uh, what was normally called a Normandy blend. It's when you take cauliflower, broccoli, carrots. We're, you can add just about anything. We're going to add a bell pepper into it. If you wanted to, you could add turnips into it, parsnips, or something. Just kind of make them up. To begin with, we just start cooking up some of our cauliflower here. We don't want to go and get it too cooked a little bit, but we want to get it going a little bit before we make our little cheese sauce. And right now is when I can go and take my other vegetables. My And I have just a little bit of salt water in there. I'm going to throw in my broccoli here. We don't want to overcook this too much. We are out in the country, so we get a little bit of a breeze here coming in. So you might hear the clapping. I'm already feeling it on and off here. And we want to take some of our carrots, and I like to go and just cut them out in a diagonal way. It's a little bit different style, but it adds a little bit of ambiance to the dish that we're cooking here. We can throw our carrots in with our little potted dish here on the side. Now vegetables are something that's a really, you know, authentic area and root style vegetables especially are what really has been used in Celtic cuisine of all the Celtic nations. They don't really, they are more high in um, complex carbohydrates, uh, high in protein. They don't really have a lot of the arable vegetables except for in Galicia and Asturias, Spain. So when we got our vegetables cooking right here, we want to kind of make them a little bit more palatable for everybody to kind of put together. And while I put that off to the side here, I've got a second off on the side that you cannot see here hopefully we'll get our better cameras here next week we can go and start making our, our sauce so the first thing we want to do our sauce we start off with a little heavy whipping cream right now if you remember seeing any of my other demonstrations when we're talking about using heavy whipping cream and why would you want to use it when this particular base because we're trying to make a nice cheese sauce so we got our heat going and the cheese that we're actually going to go and use in this is a little bit of the Kerrygold, one of the things I really love about it, the Irish cheese, but the uh, Dubliner cheese. It's a yellow, but a very sharp cheddar cheese. You want a more sharp cheddar cheese because it'll add more flavor to it, also contain more of the flavor as it gets a little bit more cooked, because the longer you apply heat to any cheese, the more you start taking away that craftsmanship. That's why that little commercial says we only use the most mature cheese when they use their baked little biscuits for it all. If they use just a mild cheddar cheese, you end up getting baked tofu. You don't really get much of a flavor. So we've got our cream here. I'm just heating this up. Now some of the other ingredients that we're going to add that are very unique to this is we're going to use a little bit of steel cut oats. Now steel cut oats are oats before they've been rolled um, flat. They actually give a little bit of a flavor and you can do a couple different ways. We're going to be putting them in as almost as a thickening agent for what we're gonna add into it, just a raw style. You could, if you wanted to, also lightly toast them. When you lightly toast them, you get this nutty oat flavor, which can be really good. But we're gonna be also adding a little bit of nutmeg into it. And of course, as I said, this is a whiskey cheese sauce. Now, how much whiskey you put in really depends on yourself and what you wanna go for and who you're cooking for. You have a lot of little wee barons there, probably not as much whiskey as other words, but it's more of a flavor because you are cooking this out right now. So we've got our, and I'm gonna move these things around a little bit. My cheese, my cream sauce is just starting to heat up. Move this more center stage here. If you've seen my demonstrations, you know I've got a kind of a nice six foot base here. It doesn't really pan out when we're trying to do it the way YouTube or Facebook makes us do for a little bit. All right, so we want to add our sharp cheddar cheese in just enough at a time that it can blend in with the cream sauce. And we want to mix this all up to the point where we're getting a little bit more of the melt, the cheese melted in 
to our cream sauce, but you don't want to burn it. So you want to keep constantly a little mixing this around, melting it. And we got pretty much our melted cheese right, right away. It doesn't take too long. Now we're going to add in at right now a couple other things. We're going to add in our whiskey. As I said, how much whiskey depends on who you're cooking for. We're using just a simple blended Scotch whiskey. And the reason why I want to use a blended Scotch whiskey rather than say an Irish whiskey. Irish whiskey, when you add it to heat, will dissipate and lose its flavor altogether. It's very, very light. It's why it's very easy to drink Irish whiskey. It's very simple to simp for it all because it has that lighter. And it's mainly because when they make the whiskey, they distill it three or sometimes four times. Scotch whiskey bourbon is only distilled twice, so it's a little stronger flavor. And you want some of the flavor, because that's the reason why we're adding it, to add in later on. Now, this time, we're also going to add in our seasoning. Now, we're going to use a little bit of Welsh mustard powder. This is kind of gives us a little heat into it, but it's not really like spicy heat that you were going to say. And we want to add a little bit of our all Gaelic seasoning, which is thyme, white pepper, and garlic powder. And just a little bit of that. Like I said, if you want the recipe for it, in our vegetarian cookbook. We'll mix this around here with our whiskey. And then we want to go and get a little bit of nutmeg. So I'm using raw nutmeg. You could probably have a, I've got a little zester. I don't have a little file, but this can work just as well for how much I want to put in. And this is all fresh nutmeg. This really gives it its extra little flavor to this. You wouldn't think about putting this, but it is something that the Celts like to go and do and using different types of spices like this. Now this style of a recipe comes about after the 14th century when the trade with the Far East and the Middle East starts to open up. That's when a lot of Celtic cuisine really kind of made a little change for flavor for it. Now we've added it, and the last thing we do now is our steel cut oats. About a quarter cup or so into it, and as I said, it's a thickening agent. Now we've pretty much got our cheese sauce all ready. Let that sit right there. And at the same time now, my vegetables have cooked all the way through. I don't want to overcook them at all. I don't want, I want them to be al dente, not style. So we're gonna go and drain that out here. I'm gonna use that same pot over again. And now this is a couple different things. Now if I were to go and use this and say, it depends on who you're serving for. Now some people, are watching their white or maybe they might have a little bit of dairy allergies or so and they want to go and have this this would be a great dish when you go in plate this up got our thongs the end of it all right you want to plate up our dish we would just take a little bit of our cheese sauce and just a little drizzle it over. Not much, it's not that thick. You could add more cheese in, that will make it thicker. This could be a nice little light dish. <laughs> Pardon, the nutmeg kinda got to me here. Now, another thing they do up in Scotland for these dishes is all across Scotland, since uh, 1980, there's been this huge vegetarian movement. And one of the reasons why there's been this, mm, vegetarian movement. I, I have not been doing nutmeg raw for quite some time here. Um, one of the reasons why they did vegetarian veg movements since 1980, the predecessor of the EU came out and said that Scotland had one of the highest heart disease rates of all of Europe. And I remember one of the first times I was in Scotland in the 80s, I went to a train station and the only thing to eat was a bacon and cheese sandwich. Well, it was two slices of bacon that were both a quarter of an inch thick and two slices of cheese, also a quarter inch thick, with a big, huge piece of mayonnaise onto it, flopped up. I kind of understand where everybody was getting there. So when they said they got this um, movement, what they did was they wanted to go and get more vegetables into the population. And one of the ways they did that was through baked potatoes or spud bars, jacket potato bars. And this is where they would go and take a baked potato, 
open it up for it all and put now see if you go to any restaurant right now anywhere in your hometown anywhere in your state or so you're gonna be off with the same thing butter sour cream cheese chives or bacon bits it's pretty much standard I think Wendy's does a little bit of broccoli uh, broccoli cheese and down in Texas they do something more of a chili but that's it in Scotland they'll do things like a crab salad in a baked potato an Irish asparagus blue cheese salad in a baked potato or in this particular case mixed vegetables and on the side of your baked potato with this whiskey cheese sauce and if you've ever had one been able to come to one of my cooking demonstrations or actually uh, some of the ones when we've had our actual cooking booth with us we've actually offered this in our spud bar it's a really simple dish this is also something you could add to pasta by putting your vegetables in with it so it's all kind of simple but it's a way of getting people to eat a little bit more of your vegetables and not necessarily with just melted cheese on style give it a little bit more flavor for it all and a lot of different aspects for it so here we are doing another one remember this is out of our vegetarian cookbook we are offering a new special for this weekend where we're doing the veg vegetarian cookbook along with three of our seasonings our Britain mushroom seasoning the all Gaelic seasoning and our mustard seasoning so this is our vegetarian packet for it all uh, normally this goes for $51.95 it's right now on sale at the uh, Celticator.com for $46.95 for it all and it's only for this week for it all so if you have any questions for us about Celtic cuisine Celtic history go and write it down here a little bit about this because all our books are a little bit half history and half cooking for it all to get a little bit more flavor for it. so I'd like to thank you all very much as they say in Celtic Slange Floor till we all meet again thank you all very much